hi this is ready in our last video we logged the cycle time of the machine but to take it a step further and calculate the machines uptime or running time by shift we need to know the exact time of the day that's where the get system value instruction comes into play in this tutorial i'll show you how to retrieve the system time and use it to log cycle times into an array for accurate tracking hello and welcome back to ready controls youtube channel if you are passionate about automation and control systems you are at the right place in our last video we explored how to log the cycle time of the machine now we are going to extend it by calculating the amount of time the machine was in uh, running mode by shift to do this first we need to understand how to get the system value of the date time that means how what time is the plc currently showing right so if you look at the look at the screen and right click properties on the controller you would see there is a date time right in this date time right now it's showing the date and the time zone right and we need to get this current date and time and use it to reset our timers to calculate the uptime so i will show you how to do that in this video okay we are online with our plc uh, it's a l24er uh, compact logics plc and if you look at uh, the new instruction we're going to introduce and this is called a uh, let's use the io mapping here it's called a get system value so we will go ahead and insert gsv get system value get system value if you go to the instruction help get system value is a it goes in a pair get and set system value but we'll just use a get system value and in there each uh, instruction you could define an attribute name and then what you want to get which attribute you want to get so if you go all the way down they are listed as common attributes the common attributes oops, sorry, back uh, objects get system objects these are all the objects that we can get the values from in this video we are only interested in the wall clock time so we will focus on getting the wall clock time wall clock time and you can see uh, there is a structure already uh, date time structure which is a d int of 7 so we will try to get that um, date time using the gsv okay so to do that we already have a gsc and in the class name we'll say what is that attribute that's called as uh, wall clock time if you look at um, the class wall clock time oh, sorry wall clock time and then the attribute in that class we want to select is the date time okay and if you look at the instruction for gsv it says the destination should be to ensure proper time we need to use the same data type as the attribute so for that we need to create a d int of 7 because our date time coming from the attribute from the gsv instruction is an array of 7 so we'll go ahead and create a the destination we'll call it system time system time from plc just call a tag like that and right click new tag uh, in the data type we need a d int of 7 say create and then we want to copy that in the first index which is 0 so all we did was in have a gsv instruction and then use the wall clock time class name an attribute of date time and we created a d int of size 7 and we moved the value into 0 okay so we'll go ahead and finalize all edits in this program so now you can see if you right click and monitor the tag you have the year in array 0 and month day and hours seconds and microseconds so let's look at this so it tells you the make it small here so we can see side by side you can see the first array is the year second array is the month followed with date and then we have an r and then we have four 
as a minute and 43 as the seconds and then we have microseconds okay let's see why uh, this time is 22 let's get the properties here date and time it's 6 here p.m. and it's showing 22 it should be by any it should be 18 let's see what's happening as you can see in the in the tags if you look at the parts right now it's 22 uh, and the current time is 610 both of these tags side by side you have a system time which is 22 which is uh, I mean Eastern time zone which is five hours ahead of the UTC so that's why it's uh, 18 plus plus 5 but during summer time you have a Eastern daylight time so that's why going 22 which is 18 plus 4 22 but if I go back and look at the the new variable which we created which is system time under system underscore local monitor this one it's showing the correct time as 6 12 p.m. so there are two attributes you could use the date time attribute which gives you the UTC time or you could use the local date time which will give you the local time of where this PLC uh, setup is so that's coming from here since we set up the local time here it's doing a this giving the local time and this instruction is giving the UTC time so best practices uh, always uh, depends on um, system but for MES systems we we use a UTC and then the local conversion is done using a small script but for our instances we could just use local time and we just need to make sure we adjust the sync the time to the workstation during daylight savings time so for now we'll just uh, keep it simple we'll just use the local date time some advanced cases we use a uh, time syncing uh, logic which will sync with your uh, local server time um, and for data validation and um, integrity of the data uh, we can sync it with a uh, server time using a separate AOI which we'll discuss in later videos for now this is how we get the local time but if you look at this local time monitor you need to know which time is which array is on this uh, like zero is the year month day day so that would be day and then you have hours here it's a military time hours and uh, minutes seconds and microseconds seconds and microseconds so that's how you get the um, local time right one way of doing it uh, but if you want to have uh, to the date instead of creating there is a concept of user defined tags which we're going to look at that in the subsequent videos but for now let's use this one so if your shift time is at this time to capture amount of time the machine has been in auto so if you look go back to our uh, get watch the previous series please uh, click on the on the, the screen so we know in is in, in step 10 the machine is in auto and we have created timers which start i think in the cycle time where how long would be when the step is in zero the machine is in idle right and we want to reset this idle time every share card it into a array uh, you use say for example uh, is not resetted so what we can do is if we are at the end of each shift so we say say equal to instruction and we know system local time dot plc and then we this is e8 and r in and we do like a one shot because we'll just do one time and control c control v for just to show i'll just use uh, say say 22 uh, 20 minutes uh, 18 say 20 minutes when the time is 18 20 and then 
second to a time a reset and time ideal underscore time that you could actually use a copy idle, idle time into a 54 for which you can watch the previous situation but I'm just showing the system yeah let's look at that here we could uh, by two get some time we see here reset then control v that take uh, current we'll take c we call it a cycle time id and uh, create for it okay so to record this uh, it shift checks pm we need to use exactly six hours zero minutes zero seconds and greater than uh, zero microseconds so all i use word and uh, make this 27 minutes so you can see when the time hits 27 18 27 zero seconds and uh, greater than zero microseconds that's when the existing time will move the idle time accumulator value will move into the the FIFO array so we have like 18 uh, 16 seconds yep so the move happened and you could see the timer reset it so if you go back and look at the FIFO we have we got accumulator value uh, get system value which gives the UTC time and we have a local date time which gives you the local time and we use that as a trigger that as a trigger to the amount of idle time per shift and one note um, we need to be careful is the structure of that array is the zero position is year followed with month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and microseconds. So that's all for uh, this video. In the next videos, we'll talk about how to take all this information and put it into a user defined tag. And also, we'll talk about get the fault DLC and how do we write a fault routine and how to false and my own faults. This in the next video. Thank you.